Hello folks and welcome to the Adventure Cowboy Channel. I'm Clayton Markser. This is the Pedersoli Borbuster Mark II in 4570. If you go back into my videos, you'll see a review for the Hogzilla Killa, which is the Cimarron version of the Pedersoli Borbuster, the original one. After the original Borbuster had been out for a little while, I was offered the opportunity to sit down with Mr. Pedersoli himself and start sketching out some redesigns of the Borbuster rifle. The results of all that redesign is the Pedersoli Borbuster Mark II. I've been testing this Pedersoli Borbuster Mark II really hard for the last several months. and I hunted with it a lot and I was even able to take an elk with it. The very first elk ever taken with a Pedersoli Borbuster Mark II. Now, I really liked the original Borbuster. However, when Mr. Pedersoli asked me what I would change if they were to make a new and improved one, I gave him a couple suggestions. And probably my biggest contribution to the design of the Borbuster Mark II has to do with the rail. Now a lot of the purists out there with lever actions are going to say that a rail doesn't belong on a lever gun and a scope doesn't belong on a lever gun. However, they have those options. If you want to shoot a traditional lever gun without any optics on it, you have many, many options to choose from. Some people would like the option to put a scope on, whether it's because they have aging eyes and they still want to be able to shoot their levers or just because they like a lever gun with a scope on it. It doesn't really matter. We, it's a free country and we can shoot whatever we want. The rail on the original Warbuster had the same sight set up right out of the box with the rear sight up on the front of the rail and fairly close to the front bead. Now when I first shot the original, I thought I was going to hate that having that rear sight so close to the front sight. But as it turned out on the original, it was quite accurate and it was incredibly fast for acquiring a target. One drawback with that sight setup for me is that in my saddle scabbard, which for those of you who don't know, a saddle scabbard is basically a holster for a rifle that attaches to a saddle for when you're hunting on horseback. So with my saddle scabbard tapering down towards the barrel, I found that the rear sight mounted on the front of the rail was rubbing a lot on the inside of the scabbard. Now it didn't knock the sight off at all, but it just concerned me. So when Mr. Pedersoli and I sat down and we were sketching out new designs and different ideas for a future bore buster, one of my biggest contributions to that design, or I should say this design, is that I wanted a option to put the sight on the rear of the rail. Now that would give me more room in my saddle scabbard to where the sight wasn't rubbing. To move the sight from one end of the rail to the other, simply loosen a screw, slide the sight off, go to the other end, slide the sight back on, and tighten the screw. You can adjust your elevation as you're shooting when you're trying to get your zero by loosening the screw and sliding it up or down the ramp accordingly. To make your windage adjustments to the left or to the right, there is a second screw right here that you can loosen, make your adjustment, and then retighten. There is a couple other benefits to having a rear sight that can move from the front of the rail to the rear of the rail or vice versa. One of those benefits has to do with your sight radius and accuracy. It is generally considered that the longer your sight radius, the distance from your rear sight to your front sight, the more accurate your rifle will be. In my own experience, I did not find there to be any decrease in accuracy at hunting ranges by having the rear sight on the front of that rail. Another benefit to having the rear sight be able to adjust from the front of the rail to the rear of the rail is for eyesight. A few of the people that I've had shoot this have found that they actually could see the sight picture better with it at the front of the rail and some of the other people that I've had shoot it can see the sights better when it's on the rear of the rail. So I've moved the rear sight from the front of the rail to the rear of the rail and got it semi-adjusted to where I'm on paper and I think it's going to be shooting pretty good. I'm going to shoot a new target right now and we'll see how accurate this thing is at 100 yards.
one of the things that I emphasized to Mr. Pedersoli was that a new bore buster should probably be more modular, more versatile. So people had more flexibility for setting it up the way that they like to shoot. Because after all, this is not just a classic cowboy action lever action. This is a go to work gun. This is a haul around in the back of the truck gun. This is a haul around in a saddle scabbard in all kinds of weather guns. To test the feeding reliability of the Bore Buster Mark II, I'm loading five different rounds with five very different projectile points into the magazine. The first round will be a Hornady 250 grain monoflex bullet. The second round will be a Powder River cartridge 350 grain round nose flat point. The third cartridge will be a Hornady 325 grain lever evolution. The next cartridge will be a 300 grain Remington jacketed hollow point. And the final cartridge will be a Powder River cartridge 430 grain flat point hard cast. I've loaded five very different rounds into the magazine. Now, of course, they're all 4570. However, they vary greatly in size and shape of the bullet. I'm going to shoot these five cartridges as fast as I can work the lever. I'm not going for any sort of accuracy here. I'm really just trying to see how well the gun is going to feed all these different types of bullets. Well, as far as feeding reliability goes, it doesn't get much better than that. It uh, ran all five of those very different rounds, very smooth and very fast. For an 1886 action and a big 4570 cartridge, that was pretty fast. And likely the only reason you'd ever need to fire a 4570 that fast is if a big grizzly bear is coming after you and you got to save your life. Another cool new feature about this Borebuster Mark II is its adjustable cheek riser right here on the comb of the stock. Now, if you were to add an optic such as this red dot right here, you might need to raise the comb of the stock to where you have a consistent cheek weld looking through this sight. When you add an optic to a rifle, whether it's a red dot like this or an actual rifle scope, it raises the sight line over the bore axis. In order to get a good sight picture through the optic, often you'll find that since the sight line is raised above the bore axis that you really should be raising the comb of your stock so that your cheek weld stays natural. So if I was looking through this red dot right now I have to raise my cheek weld from where it's natural. Usually my cheek welds right down here underneath my cheekbone but with this red dot I gotta raise it up. If I keep it natural it's right underneath that cheekbone and it's consistent every single time. If you have it down here on the side of your chin, it's really hard to get a consistent cheek weld, which means it's going to be really hard to have consistent shooting patterns. 
Often on other guns with adjustable cheek risers, you're gonna see knurled knobs right here that stick out that you can tighten or loosen. I actually prefer the Allen key set screws, and the reason for that is there's nothing to catch on the side of this stock. I'm not going to be catching knobs on a saddle scabbard or on a truck seat or even on branches walking through the timber. It just means you have to have an Allen key to adjust. Now some people aren't going to like that. They're going to say, well, I don't want to take a tool when I go out shooting. Well, if you have to adjust your cheek riser out in the field while you're hunting, you have bigger problems. Adjusting a cheek riser is not something that you do in the field while you're hunting. That is something that should be done long before when you're sighting your rifle in and making sure that everything's accurate so that you can have the cleanest, most efficient kill possible. If you make any changes out in the field while you're actually hunting, you compromise your ability to take a clean, ethical shot and kill that animal efficiently. To adjust the cheek riser on this stock, just put the Allen key in the hole there into the set screw, loosen the bolt, lefty loosey or the screw. Once you have these Allen screws loosened, you just raise your cheek riser to whatever level you need to be able to have a good sight picture through your optic and then tighten each one of these back down. The Borebuster Mark II also has a threaded muzzle. You can unscrew this cap and replace it with a muzzle brake or a suppressor. I was able to Harvest this elk with the Pedersoli Borebuster Mark II. And we wanted to make like the ultimate using modern lever gun. And by modern, I mean you can see it's got a coated stock. It is a wood stock, not synthetic, but it is coated with a really uh, durable material. It's got a Cerakote finish on the metal parts. It's got a rail on it, and we've modified the rail. And um, it's got a adjustable comb on the stock and a threaded muzzle so you can put a suppressor or a certain kind of muzzle brake on it. I was hoping to get more of this hunt on video and unfortunately as is the case sometimes when you're hunting elk an opportunity presents itself and you're not able to get your camera gear out. Hey, this is Hooty Who. He's gonna shoot the Borebuster Mark II for the first time. He's always saying he's like this rifle so now we're going to give it a first shot. I like those uh, sights. I just go for that berm again. Go for the berm. Just under. Yeah, I like this. What do you think? I don't like that a lot. Compared to other 4570s you've shot? Yeah, I'll trade my Marlin for that today. <laughs> no, it feels good. I don't really like that pad. And the sights, it's easy to see those. Super easy to see. They're quick. I sure appreciate you watching this review of the Pedersoli Borebuster Mark II. And if you'd like to see more of my content, please click subscribe. Mm -hmm.